And joining me now to talk a little bit about early childhood development and how the business community is very invested in what's happening here in the state of Michigan is Rip Raps, and he's the CEO of the Kresge Foundation. Rip, it's always good to see you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And Joe Scandalberry, he is the Vice President of Program Strategy of the Kellogg Foundation. So it's good to see you. Good to be here. All right, so when we have this conversation, it feels like in Michigan, over the past five years, people have really started to concentrate and say, ah, there is this connection between early childhood and success later on mm -hmm. in life with education, and then that is going to affect our businesses because we're going to have kids who are educated, kids who are ready for the jobs of the next century. So talk to me a little bit about where people are now in this process and making sure that businesses are invested and what we're doing with these, these little ones in pre-K. I'm going to start with right, you, right. Rep. You can, start you can, with me. You can um, launch right into that. <laughs> well, I think what's so fascinating is the extent to which this has, I think, become sort of received knowledge. Uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when I was working on some of these issues in Minnesota, you really had to make the case that these early years were formative to how kids did, not just in school, but throughout life. Their resilience, their intellectual, emotional stability, all of the kinds of things that we've kind of come to take for granted. And I think now the business community in particular understands that this is a spectrum of uh, opportunity to make sure that kids do well through their whole life. That if we wait too long, or if we sort of undervalue these early years, it's just incrementally more difficult uh, as you go down the path. It, it's tougher to get kids through high school successfully. It's tougher to, for them to be good um, students in college and post-secondary, and it's tougher for them to be good employees. And I think there's really very little argument now in the business community that that's the case. Jim, what are you starting to see? Well, I'm just going to simply say, I think for the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, our focus is on children. And we especially think about children in those early years. We think that if we give children an opportunity to be educated and to, be, to, and to develop well, that they ultimately thrive and they're able to be independent. And the great thing about the business community in Michigan owning this as part of its challenge and its opportunity is that it's really, we see it as beginning to really think through long-term economic development. So the 21st century is right around the corner and we know that if we start early with these young people, we'll have a thriving economy here in Michigan. You know, I think it's, it's, it's interesting, and we talk about this, and everyone can agree, and every parent you talk to, everyone here would agree, yes, we want to make sure that our children have the best in life and have the best opportunities and the best chances at, at early education. But it's also reaching out to families and making sure that they're aware of what's available to them, the programs that are there, and helping them uh, along the way, because everyone wants the best for their kid, but they may not know exactly where to find the tools to, to make that happen, Joe. Absolutely. I think one of the things, making parents aware and parent engagement is pretty key here and there are lots of ways that the business community can actually become involved in that uh, primarily inviting early childhood educators to be part of lunch and learns for instance uh, partnering with um, with community-based organizations and providers and learning what they're doing well making small investments and maybe sometimes big investments to make sure that parents and customers understand how vital this this space of early learning really is um, we're happy that we have examples like the work that PNC, which I'm sure we'll hear about uh, tomorrow, uh, they've done some great work really driven by their employees, which is very impressive. So you literally have employees who are volunteering with CBOs, employees who are helping to do fund development with CBOs, and we think those are great models. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, that, that on the other side of the ledger, this is a tough problem for all of the reasons you've you've described. There are a lot of opportunities for parents to engage if they're tuned in and they, they're well resourced, but what we're finding is that more and more families are sort of falling off the cycle, that they don't know how to access high quality early childhood services, that those services simply aren't available, that networks of parents working together in common purpose that so many of us take for granted often doesn't occur. And I think one of the challenges that both the Kellogg Foundation and the Kresge Foundation are committed to working on is to try to create a system that's more accessible for parents and for kids, that sort of hangs together as a system so you really know where you can go if you, if you want a certain kind of service or a certain kind of support. And I think it's tough, particularly in the city of Detroit. It's a really difficult proposition, and one of the reasons that we've joined forces is to try to make more of a system that is 
both accessible and comprehensible to parents. And let's talk about that and specifically mm -hmm. concentrating what's happening in Detroit right now and people talking about for Detroit to, to keep taking steps forward, that there has to be investment in what's happening with children. We see what's happening in the news with Detroit Public Schools mm -hmm. and where the future is, is going to be there. So w when you look at that, do you find that you say, gosh, this seems like a huge, a huge problem or how do you even start to, to tackle that? And the fact that you, you know, you're partnering up and with other foundations, talk about some of the collaborative work that has been so necessary now from so many different organizations to step in and maybe fill some holes that maybe government can't at this point. It's such a, uh, it's such a non system in, in terms of these early years. With the K 12 system, you sort of know that you have a board of uh, directors, that you have schools that are sort of clear pathways in order to get the kids the kind of success that you need. In early childhood, it's much more difficult. You have networks of informal providers, you have some centers, you have Head Start, you have all of these different pieces. And one of the things that Kellogg and Kresge are trying to do is to pull those pieces together into a whole that makes sense and that is um, ultimately going to offer parents the opportunity to get high quality services. I think what's so often the case in this space is that there may be services, but there are services provided by a grandmother or a relative or someone who may not be well trained and you're you don't want to be in a position of not knowing that the quality of care that your child is getting is the kind of care that that child needs in order to be successful. You know, I think, Joe, when we think about impact of um, how kids are prepared for the job world later on, we're looking at high school students and we're talking about counseling and maybe if they go to a university or if they go into skilled trades and go right out there. But we need to think a, a little bit globally and go all the way back to that four-year-old and say, if we start here, instead of trying to intervene with someone who is 16, 17 years old, we could make a real change. Yeah. Well, well, we totally agree with that. I, I want to build off of what Ripta shared in terms of the gaps of knowledge and the gaps in service and support. So we know that Michigan, I think, led the, has led, really, in investing in early childhood education. Over the last two years, we were talking in the neighborhood of about $130 million just to expand early childhood spaces and opportunity. Um, and that's noble, and that's great. And I think the business community had a great part to play in that. Um, Nonetheless, as Rip highlighted, there are gaps, and the gaps exist because people either can't take advantage, advantage of centers or services, and even the idea of you know, individual services or family services, we haven't figured out how to scale innovations that bring learning and teaching and exposure to homes or to grandmothers who are taking care of four or five children because they just happen to be a safe person. Uh, we haven't figured out how to scale that, and part of our collaboration with the business community and others in Detroit is to figure out how do we model this type of network of support in such a manner that we can say to other cities who have smaller numbers of young people, this is how you get this done. This is how you come together for the, be for the benefit of all of your children. And more importantly, this is one of the things we think we're saying to employers by coming together is I think we're saying to employers, most of your employees come to you as whole people. They come to you with families, they come to you with concerns, they come to you with neighbors. And your participation in early learning and your participation in helping to support a growing network of, of, of uh, early childhood education, frankly, brings you into that space as a whole, as a whole participant in the community. Not simply just a job creator, but part of the fabric of employment and education for young people. So. Did you want to comment on that as we wrap up? Well, the only, uh, uh, you don't want to leave on a, uh, on a down note. Um, uh, on one hand, we have a situation in Detroit where we just don't have enough slots for kids. And even the slots we have are not high quality slots. And so one of the undertakings that Kresge and Kellogg has, has taken is to say that we are going to create more and more opportunities for these kids. We're going to renovate centers, we're going to build some new centers, we're going to try to create better networks of support among the centers that exist. But on the other hand, communities all across America have figured out how to do this. And we have lots of places we can look where they actually have very much like what we propose to do here, built something out of these dif different parts. And as, as hard as that is, it can be done. And I think one of the reasons that it's so important to be talking about this at a conference like Mackinac is that in almost all of those cases, the business community has taken a leadership role. 
Uh, you need the private sector to really, in some ways, legitimize the civic sector and the public sector. And when the, all of the sectors then are firing on all cylinders, that's when you get real results. Well, we look forward to seeing the progress that uh, you'll be making in these next couple of years. Rip Rapson from Kresge and Joe Scandalberry from Kellogg, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Okay.